sat and listened to the state's case against David Walker. He has been charged with the most serious crime of murder in the first degree. You've listened to the testimony, you've had the law read to you, and interpreted as it applies in this case. Now it's your duty to sit down and try to separate the facts from the fancy. Evidence has been presented and now it is up to you to decide if this man should be found guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Katie Warner, just the crime reporter I was looking for. I already told you, I emailed the articles over to you from the State vs. Schwartz case. Not what this is about. I think I have something you might be interested in. Okay, and what is that? I received an email today from somebody who says they have an alibi for a guy who's been in jail for 15 years. Okay, you've got me. I'm listening. I knew I would. <laughs> so, the email's from this woman, Hannah Altamar. She introduces herself, yada, 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 then goes on to talk about the David Walker case. Sound familiar? Vaguely familiar. The name's ringing a bell. Michael Allen, the big-time lawyer who died in that car crash, he was the prosecutor on the case. That's where I've been hearing the name. The name's been all over the news as of late. I know. They won't shut up about it. <laughs> Maria, he died. I know, and it's all very sad, but it was a week ago. I'm ready to move on. So anyway, Hannah goes on to say, I believe I hold the keys to David's innocence, as I can tell you I know he didn't do it, couldn't have done it, because I was with him. I'm his alibi. So... Is that it? What do you mean, is that it? What's the alibi? I'm not dropping everything for someone who wants her 15 seconds of fame. Do you really think I would bring you something if I didn't look into it first? <laughs> something against you. I, I'm just skeptical. It's part of the job. Yeah, yeah. She also goes on to explain that she never told anyone about David because she was young and naive and too scared to go to the police at the time. She also says, ah, right here. I've also looked into the court files and know that a couple of things other than his alibi are faulty too. I have enough reason to believe his lawyer, Tom O'Connell, mishandled the case. <laughs> oh, your favorite. Your favorite too. I told you, I read through these files. I think we should look into it. If Hannah has the information she says she does, the prosecution's timeline for when the murder happened is completely wrong. You just need to talk to David before we get into this. Where is he? The county prison. It's a close one this time. Hi, David. How are you? I've been better. So did anyone fill you in on why I'm here? No. They just tell me to do something now and I'd do it. No questions asked. But let me take a guess. You're another lawyer my mom's hired to try to prove my innocence. Good guess, but no. Someone other than your mom thinks you are innocent. Really? And who's that? I can't disclose that information to you just yet, but I just need your side whoa, of the story. Whoa, whoa, whoa. If you're not a lawyer, then who are you? Why should I tell you anything? I'm a crime reporter. But I also work with my colleague Maria, who is a defense lawyer. We look into lawsuits that might have been mishandled or where new evidence might have been brought up, which we both believe to be the case for you. Now, you don't have to tell me anything. But really, what do you have to lose? Everyone can go around the room and vote guilty or not guilty. I'll go first. Guilty. 
Not guilty. 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 Not guilty. Guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. Guilty. How could you guys possibly think he's innocent? I mean, he clearly did it. Yeah, they made a really good case against him. Kid clearly did it. His alibi. Or rather, lack of an alibi. Why would he call her after he killed her? I mean, come on. Can we go over exactly what happened? What they presented to us. You know, whatever. Look at this. The witness, Taylor, said that she saw him in the hallway right outside of Anna's door around 5.30 p.m. Mm -hmm. And the police say that they believe Anna was hit on the head around 5.45. And then another eyewitness account mm -hmm. at the McDonald's right next door to her dorm around 6 o'clock. The cops marked the subway times from when he left the swim practice that night at the pool to when he ended up back at school, and it matches up. Yeah, because SEPTA schedules are always accurate. <laughs> right. You know, he has a point. And where did he say he was again? At, at school or something? He says... Oh, he claims that he was at swim practice. He says the swim practice generally ended around 4.30, but that he hung around after. So he didn't actually leave until after 5. OK, so what does he mean he hung around after? I mean, that had me skeptical since they first brought that up. I know exactly how it looks. And if there was anything I can do to try to remember who that girl was, I would do it. All I know is that some girl who I had never met before, who I thought was on the team, hurt her ankle, and I waited after practice with her until someone came to help her. And your coach didn't have any record of anyone hurting their ankle? Nope. We practiced at a pool with a bunch of other different schools, so she was probably from one of the different ones. So some random girl introduced herself to me, and I forgot her name, because I obviously didn't think it would be important. Did your lawyer ever look into any injuries reported at the pool? Mr. O'Connell said he would, but I'm not sure if he ever did. You never pushed him on finding out? I mean, he was busy with a lot of other things that could have helped my case. What could have possibly been more important than finding an alibi? I don't know! He was the lawyer! I was trusting him. Did you ever ask one of your friends uh, if they knew someone who broke their ankle. All my friends bailed on me after Anna died. They wanted to be as far away from me as possible. I was hoping this girl would step forward, but she never did. I do remember that day. It was raining really hard, and I slipped walking out of practice and hurt my ankle. And you know for sure that David was there? Yeah, I remember, because I had a little crush on him. I think almost every girl did at one point. He seemed perfect back then. Good looks, good grades, really great swimmer. Every team knew about him, but he wasn't perfect, was he? Anyway, I remember he was there because when I slipped, he was there to help me out. My teammates had left by that point. I knew no one, and like a knight in shining armor, he was there. He stayed after his practice to make sure I had some way to get home safe. My mom eventually came to pick me up. I sprained my ankle pretty bad that day, but I could still swim after a couple of days. My coach never even knew I was hurt. How do you know it was that specific day, or even that specific swim practice? I used to keep a journal in college. I wrote it down that on that day, October 23rd, 2001, that he talked to me. Oh, geez, I sound so young. Do you still have the journal? Yeah, I brought it down earlier to make sure I could show you. Ah, uh, here it is. You never came forward with this. Why now and not then? I got scared. I didn't really want to be involved in a murder case. I was dealing with a bunch of other menial things back then that I thought were important. But I did try to come forward earlier. I tried to contact the lawyer when the case was halfway through, but he said it was too late for this trial. 
He said what? He said something like, if I came forward earlier, he would have been able to use me, but the evidence already had to be presented to the judge, so I just forgot about it until now. He said what? I know. The lawyer practically threw out this case. David doesn't seem to think he did. David actually really liked O'Connell. It just doesn't make sense to me. I don't see how... If you have an alibi witness for your client, why wouldn't you use them? Well, there are a lot of reasons. If you put them on the stand, the prosecution could poke holes in the witness's testimony and that could hurt your defense. The witness could be faulty or, in the case of an alibi, it's one person's word against another and sometimes that doesn't look good. Hannah makes an airtight alibi though, doesn't she? He, he never even reached out to her. That seems a little bit strange. Yeah. Yeah, it does. You know, I called that O'Connell guy a bunch of times and I left him countless messages and he never got back to me. I just... Uh... I know! David doesn't even seem that upset that O'Connell didn't look further into the alibi. If you were accused of killing your girlfriend, wouldn't you latch on to anything that could possibly get you off? Look here. The prosecution planned out the subway ride, so they have him leaving practice at 4.30. Getting to the subway stop that's closest to the dorms at around 5. Then he walks up to her room, and this is all around 5.30ish. He kills her at 5.45, and then he immediately goes to eat fries and a milkshake at McDonald's? Let's say Hannah's testimony is true. How, how does that change the timeline? It makes the timeline nearly impossible. <laughs>somebody who was lingering around after practice. Exactly. Unless he wasn't there. But why would he say he was there if there were so many people to say he wasn't? We should focus on what he actually said, or what his lawyer said, because he didn't actually get up on the stand. He just said he hung around after for no apparent reason. I mean, the kid can't even think of a good lie. Isn't that reason enough to believe that maybe he was there? I mean, He's supposed to remember what happened on October 23rd, but he doesn't even feel that there was anything significant. So how is he supposed to remember something that happened on some random Tuesday? And especially eight weeks after it happened. You, what did you do exactly at 7.45 p.m. eight weeks ago? I don't know, I was probably at work. Probably at work, but are you sure? They probably have a timesheet or something like that, but what if they don't? This is irrelevant. He wasn't killing anyone. Why would he remember that day? Come on. So wouldn't it make sense if David Walker didn't remember anything that happened to him on a day that has no significance to him? Can we agree that just because nothing stood out to him, maybe there's doubt that he didn't do it? You know, I'd probably go here after I killed somebody, too. <laughs> oh, you're sick. <laughs> Only half kidding. Don't you think it's weird that he came to McDonald's right next to Anna's dorm after he killed her? Uh, who would be that stupid? College boys would be that stupid. Though, we do need to talk to the other witness they put on the stand. The McDonald's employee? No, I think he was telling the truth. David didn't even deny going to McDonald's in his testimony. I'm talking about Taylor. Taylor's the one who um, saw him in the dorm hallway, right? Yep. Get this, she was friends with both of them. She apparently cried on the witness stand. People really believed her. You're talking like you don't believe her. I think she wanted in on the courtroom action, the drama of it all. I'm trying to get a sense of her character and all those things you do so well. So can you explain this Taylor girl to me? What about her? How did you know her? What was her relationship to you and Anna? She says you guys are friends. Here you go. Did you hear about Mike dying in that horrible car crash? Yes, it's very sad. That's actually how I ended up here. Someone wrote to us about David's possible innocence. But he's guilty. I saw him in the hallway right before it happened. Right. Well, right now we're just looking into it. Uh, me and Marie haven't fully decided on going after the case or not. Oh. We're just trying to get as much information as we can. 
We just wanted to hear about your relationship to David and Anna. We were all friends. Anna and Taylor became friends freshman year. They were on the same floor. Best friends until the end type of thing. We met David at a party our freshman year before classes started. And then we had a class together and just hit it off. I was at this party and met Taylor and we uh, went home together. I didn't know Anna until we had class together. Anna and David instantly just started hitting it off. Anna would tell me how cute she thought he was and how much she really liked him. It was young love. I think Taylor had a crush on me, but I really started to like Anna. Anna and I got together one night to study by ourselves. And things happened. Anna started freaking out. She said, gotta keep it a secret because Taylor will get mad. And so they hooked up, and I was so happy about it. I saw the whole thing happen right in front of my eyes. They started officially dating not long after that. So then after sneaking around, Taylor caught us one time, worked down. Started saying we weren't friends anymore. I must have heard, I thought we were best friends. A hundred times a jokingly say how she was scared for her life. Anna and Taylor weren't friends after that, but she hated Anna. I guess she was always right. I saw him walk down our dorm hallway and he looked so angry. I still remember the scared feeling I had inside when I saw him. I don't know why Taylor said she saw me in that dorm. I tried to tell Mr. O'Connell, and he tried to break her lie down, but he just couldn't do it. And you didn't do anything to stop him or warn Anna? I didn't think in those terms. I just thought they were going to have another fight, but, but I, I didn't think it would have ended up with Anna dead. The story that she told is completely different than what David told me. That's what I thought. But we can't completely trust David either. He's trying to get out of jail. He wants us to believe only him. David seems so genuine. And Taylor? Something's off. And we went after, after David, remember? He didn't come looking for us. That's true. But she could be exaggerating and still telling the truth. I probably wouldn't like her if you don't trust her. Have you told David about Hannah yet? No, not yet. I just can't understand why he can't remember her name. I would remember, and he can't keep saying that it was just a regular day. His girlfriend was murdered. Have you asked him about that day? How he found out? No, but I will. There's no way his relationship was as picture perfect as he describes it if no one went up against Taylor to defend him. He's hiding something. I just, I just don't think it's him. Bullshit. If my girlfriend gets murdered, I remember that. He's got a point. Yeah, if my girlfriend got killed, I would go back and make sure I remembered everything about that day and why I did it. I guess you're right. It just wasn't a normal day, even if he didn't kill her. His girlfriend was still murdered. So the timeline checks out. That is, if we don't believe that he stayed after practice and just hung out. He doesn't have an alibi. It's just, no, something's off. I, I don't think he did it. Well, if he didn't do it, then who did? 